Hello and welcome to New Song Cafe here at WorshipTogether.com. My name is Matt Marr. Today we're joined by Keith and Kristen Getty and Stuart Townend. They're going to be sharing with us the song that Keith and Kristen wrote, There is a Higher Throne. We hope that you enjoy this New Song Cafe. Stuart, Kristen, Keith, it's great to be with you again. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to share the song with us today, There is a Higher Throne. Yeah. Um, Kristen, uh, you wrote you know, you wrote a lot of lyrics on this song. Um, yeah, it's actually the first song I ever wrote with Keith. Really? So a good few years ago now. I wrote it out of my parents' house, actually. Do you remember that? A long time ago. On a very bad piano. <laughs> but <laughs> we wanted to write a song um, about heaven, and my dad, um, he's a pastor, had drawn my attention to a, um, a passage in Revelation 7 where the multitude are standing before the Lamb and the, at the throne and made perfect in the blood of the Lamb. And he loved this line, the idea of the Lamb becoming the shepherd king. Mm. And he said, it would be great if you get that worked into a song, you know, and he was my dad and my pastor, so I figured I really should try. <laughs> so we did, and um, basically verse 1 is coming to the throne. And then verse 2 is what it would be like to live at the throne, that life doesn't suddenly end mm. um, when we go to heaven, but actually it's the beginning of a whole new story um, and reigning with Christ. And then the chorus then is just this refrain that we hear a lot of in Revelation, all glory, honor, wisdom, power, strength, thanks to God. Wow, that's great. Well, please, please share it with us. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. It's really pretty. It's a great, really, really pretty melody. You know, there every once in a while there's just those melodies that are just of course it's probably the fact that you're singing too that that might help. <laughs> um, Keith, maybe walk us through a little bit kind of harmonically what, what's going on with the song. Sure. <clears throat> we'll be taking the key of E. Kind of a nice bright key for a, a ballad if you could manage to get the, the range right. So it begins there is so it begins an E. And then it begin A, and then a B, and E, and C sharp minor, A, down to F sharp minor, then it goes back round again. So E, A, B. E, and we bring the rhythm section in the second half more. C sharp minor, A, F sharp minor, B. And we go to the chorus and we go into the first inversion, kind of E with a G sharp minor at the bottom. sharp minor, B, and repeats. And the whole thing repeats again. It's All great. Right. There's a great symmetry to it, you know, kind of keeping in the fact of it being, I have very much a feel like a modern hymn, you know, there's, the hymns have such great musical symmetry. Even just in the melody too, how it, it um, 
uh, how it kind of goes one line and then it kind of falls down a little bit and kind of comes back up. There's, it's, right. it's really great. It makes it so singable for people yeah. to kind of catch on to it, yeah. you know. And there's a little bit of the sort of the modern pop ballad in that one in that it has a chorus. It's all building towards the big first line of the chorus as yeah. well. So. That's great. Stuart, what, what were you yeah. kind of doing on the guitar there? Well, I suppose I'm, I'm playing quite a rhythmic role. Uh, in it, so I'm trying to give that rhythm that perhaps you'd get with the with the hats of the of drums yeah. if you're doing that. So obviously, if I, if it's just two of us playing or playing without drums, then it's really important for me to be keeping that kind of yeah, that rhythm going. You're so like I'm a really percussive instrument. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So again, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying not to make it too full sounding and make it quite open sounding. So I'm using uh, a, 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 a voicing of E that doesn't involve any thirds because again. Um, it's a little bit, it sounds a little bit too sweet sometimes. Yeah. And I think you're probably covering, Keith is probably covering some of the uh, thirds. So I'm keeping it open. So I've got no thirds in this, it's just fifths. That's, that's a real nice broad, yes. broad paint, broad uh, brush stroke to that's it. That's right. Know, uh, so, sonically. And then I'm just trying to keep that very steady rhythm. If I was playing with a, uh, a drummer, I'd have to be really careful that I'm sitting with that hi hat very much. I think the tendency can be to, particularly when you get to the chorus and it gets exciting, you start rushing ahead yeah. and driving, but you need to keep really locked in so to keep no that tight sound. So, guitar players <laughs> get locked in with the get locked in with the hi hat and, and, and the ride symbol. So I'm really uh, I'm I'm moving as little as possible. Again, an A. So I've got the B's then become a like a second. In yeah, the it's chord. like an A two. But yeah. again, I'm avoiding that third thing. And in fact, it's yeah. I I subscribe to the lazy guitar playing um, <laughs> technique. So I'm actually only moving one finger at a time. So I'm doing that for an E. I'm doing that for an A. I'm doing that for a B. That's great. So let's let's kind of get maybe get a close up on that. And so okay. you have the so first got, one. You have. I've got an E there. So I'm actually covering with this. Your first finger. Fingers. I'm covering yes, the fourth finger. I'm covering those two notes. I'm covering the A, a string and the D string, and then. Um, uh, with the G string, I'm going up with my little finger there. So I just need to be careful that this doesn't cover the, the yeah, strings. That's, yeah, that's, that's where the practice um, part yes, comes in. Yes, exactly. And then when I'm going to A, so I want to release the A string. So I just move that finger off there and just take it so it's just on the second fret of the D string. There you go. Again. And then to get the B. You just put your fourth finger. I'm putting the ring finger yeah, there. Yeah, right down there. And that back there. Okay. Simple. That's great. And so then on the chorus, when you get to the chorus, then it's the first chord's an E over G sharp. E over G sharp. So I've got the ring finger available to actually just cover there. It's a little sharp, but there. So I've got that. That's great. And then I'm going to that one. So and for some of the more complex chords, like the C sharp minor, it still works if you keep that B shape and move it up there. And let it all ring out. Yes. It's, so it's basically like you're playing a bar chord, but you just you're just fingering That's right. the notes that. And, and generally, guitars just sound, they ring a lot more when you've got open strings, don't they? Yeah, you know, they it do. just sounds a lot, rather than, exactly. where it's not ringing as much. Yeah. And then just the other one that I'm doing, again, trying to keep as few fingers on as possible, the F sharp minor. Again, if you think of that F sharp minor shape like that, or we, sometimes we play it like that, right. again, if you release the, those yeah. top two strings there, and just, this is cheating slightly, but use the yeah. thumb and just curl it over. There, you've got the F sharp minor. You've got, yeah. And it's got, it's got an open sound because there's a fourth in it. There's a yes. B still yeah. open in it, but it's not getting in the way. Right. So, so that's, that's what great. I'm doing. Well, thanks so much for sharing that. Thank you both. Thank you, Kristen, for writing such great lyrics. And, uh, and uh, thanks for being here on the, the New Song Cafe. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.